Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna paint this robot into a post-apocalyptic battle damage war machine. He's already primed up and ready to go. I have no plan, I'm just gonna be flying by the seat of my pants with this, and that's okay. I'll be using two different shades of green that I always have laying around green because I'm very partial to it, but also because it has this, you know, military war vintage um, aesthetic to it, so it would make sense for this robot. It doesn't matter where you start, but it does matter that you start with the base color. You got three things to remember, base color, highlights, and shadows. There's more details to it, but those are the basics. For this particular piece, I'm not very concerned with painting within the lines. In fact, I want it to look very faded and damaged and old, so I'm mixing the one tone with the other tone to make it look like this, this overall color that has faded in some spots. As much as I want it to look very splotchy, this wet on wet look will make it look more natural. You don't want anything, you don't want even the splotches to look splotchy, <laughs> if that makes sense. You, you still want it smooth and natural looking, so the wet on wet technique will blend it together much more naturally. beginning I was painting one section at a time because I had this loose plan of leaving some of that gray as an accent color but somewhere around now I decided that that wasn't gonna be something that I wanted with the exception of this little yellow part I wanted to test out to see if it would look good as an accent color and thus I'm gonna paint the whole thing, the base green, and then go in with the accent color. So the secret, I believe, in a good art piece or a good painting or a good sculpture or whatever it is, I think it's definition. I think it's contrast. It's like having a very muted photo. It doesn't really look appealing, does it? Until you turn up the contrast, until you play with the shadows and the highlights and bring it out, bring those features out by giving it um, contrast and definition. So it's the same idea goes with any kind of painting or any kind of artwork. You want to create differences in order to see the different forms and shapes of it. Here I am applying the highlights. Where you apply the highlights is important. You want to hit the highlights on areas that would be highlighted naturally by sunlight. So it would be the edges, it would be the top of surfaces. And even if you want to bring out certain details, you would color those details and it would pop out from the base color. In this situation, the lighter tone actually has a dual purpose. One, it is a highlight, but two, it also is the basis of um, erosion, um, of fading, of chipping. So you kind of have a, a two, two birds with one stone kind of deal, and that's a sweet deal if you ask me. I do use my fingers a lot to blend and to wipe off extra paint um, just because acrylic paint tends to dry quite quickly and by the time you pick up another brush or another tool to do that blending or a rag to wipe off extra paint it's it's almost too late so don't be afraid of getting your hands dirty guys your fingers are one of the best painting tools out there
you guys need more clarification on a technique or if I'm not explaining something well enough or if you just have a different question, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments and I'll make sure I'll get to them. Wow, okay, that was a lot of highlighting. Now we're on to one of my favorite parts of any project is the black wash. The black wash you will use on terrain, you would use on vehicles, you would use on buildings, and you would use on your figures. It just has a way of tying in the colors and muting or, or, or turning down the con um, turning down the saturation of these colors and making it more realistic um, so in this instance it's giving definition it's giving contrast to the highlights but it is also adding the grime the dirt and just the the general wear and tear of a robot of this kind and black washes are very easy to make. It's just basically watered down black paint. And there's a lot of artists on um, YouTube that use oil paints for their washes. I guess it's a little slower to dry, thus easier to blend. Um, I tend to be very impatient, so I stick with acrylics so it can dry a little bit quicker. And the technique to apply the wash is basically all over and then you dab off the excess. I'm making sure I'm putting extra in the crevices, in the cracks, in the lines, um, in the shadows as these are places that are naturally darker. It's so satisfying to see the black wash get into all the little lines, the ridges of the details to bring them all out. It's just a very super fast way of painting these lines without painting the lines. On a convex surface like this kneecap, I'm making sure that I'm getting the underside. The top side has the highlight and the underside has the shadow. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my accent color and I'm gonna stick to that contrast rule by breaking up that green color. And I don't want too much of the yellow in one spot. I, I really want to 
have this balanced and I, I want to create this contrast through these different values. Again, I'm not too concerned about getting these colors on perfectly because I want it to look worn and faded. Another favorite color of mine to add is red, especially when it comes to tattoo art. It's just one of those final touches that brings it all together that really adds the extra punch. I don't know what it is, but it, it really just does. So I do suggest um, a second accent color and whatever it is, you use it sparingly, especially if it's a red like this. It really does the job of tying everything together and making something look complete. So we've come to the most fun part of this tutorial, which is how to create chipping effects. First, you got to put down a lighter color. Lighter color acts as the first layer that's being chipped. It's being chipped down to the primer. So you got that light color. The second darker color represents the metal underneath the dark metal so obviously you can use different colors because you've got different color metals some people use metallic I'm gonna use the most common color which is a, a black um, again just because it creates the most contrast in regards to where and how we're gonna apply the first layer of white the first layer of the chipping effect is you got to imagine where the, this robot will be damaged usually it's going to be the raised areas and the edges so that's where we're going to apply this white where we're going to see this paint chip off to reveal the primer but you know we're not, we're not going to just make this straight line of damage it's gonna spread out like most erosion and this this eating of the paint so i'm gonna be extending that white to more than just the edges i'm not gonna be going overboard with it but it's just you know extending it a little bit more because you imagine like this chip is getting bigger and bigger and you want to have a good brush to do this. You want to be able to make small dots as well as bigger shapes. The whole point is that you do, don't want it to look uniform or like a pattern. You want it quite random. After I was done with the white chipping step, I just felt like my brain was telling me I need to put a pink wash over this whole robot. Um, for whatever reason, I felt like it would tie in the red with the, the green. Sometimes, you know, with um, deterioration of colors and, you know, just over time, there's like a runoff of colors. It just made sense to me. And visually, I think it made sense as well. Tell me what you guys think. Did I make a mistake? So here I am already starting on the black step of the chipping effect. And this is uh, supposed to be the metal that is coming through the primer that you're seeing. And again, like the white areas, you want to be random you want it to look natural um, make sure that there's not the same shapes that you're creating over and over and here we do want to paint within the lines a bit you want to paint within the white areas that you've already painted 
find that the smaller you can get with the chips, with the dots that you're making, um, the better it's gonna look. I mean, you definitely need a variation, but if you can get those tiny dots in, it's gonna really add to the overall effect. Right now that black is very stark, but we have one more step to knock that down. And guys, keep in mind that whatever color that you're trying to fade out, you're going to use just a lighter tone of the same color. You're not going to see me use that yellow on that red. You're going to see me use the pink and that's why there's pink. Okay, we've come to the second last step in my painting tutorial and I keep on saying that this part is my favorite part this part is my favorite part I just love all this de detailing work because it really really starts coming together and you're seeing it and I get so excited but so this is the rust color that's gonna make things rusty and it's gonna knock down that black and um, it's very easy to make. You just use an orangey um, brown and you just add a lot of water to it. And you're applying it to where all the chip areas are because that's where the metal is coming through and it's rusting all the paint around it. And then you want to put it where you feel like water is accumulating on the robot and where the rust is dripping tight spots, corners, um, crevices. These are the areas that rust would form.
and rest is fun because you can start making streak marks. And I mean, you can do that with the black wash too, and I will after this step. But yeah, the rusting streaks is what really adds the detail, the realism to whatever it is that you're trying to distress. Again, make sure that you're getting crevices because this is where water will naturally accumulate and create rust. Last but not least, and I, I think that this is a very important step to do, it's using the black wash again and really looking over your piece and seeing what areas need to be re-darkened to make sure that again that contrast and that definition is still there. And there you have it guys, a post-apocalyptic, distress, battle damage robot. Can you tell that it's made from pens and markers and other dollar store parts? Let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching guys. Until the next video, take care. Bye.